and welcome to 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. I'm your host, Rachel Vogel, and joining me tonight is Jake Posner, founder and CEO of The Culture Theory. What was once an impassioned late-night impulse has now become a full-scale music management company for artists, producers, and songwriters, as well as an incubator for future executives. Originally, the company was built off the heels of discovering the band Arizona, and over the last several years, the band has grown from a group of unknown producers to an established act, which is now signed to Electro Music Group. Other Culture Theory clients have had major cuts with artists like Kaigo, David Guetta, and Rosa Lynn, and launched collaborative partnerships with companies like Apple and Netflix. In the early days, while simultaneously running the Culture Theory, Jake became the Senior Vice President of A&R at Operations for Hollywood Media. So Jake, thanks so much for being here. So excited to have you. How's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Rachel. I'm excited. Are you ready for question one? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm prepared. Let's do it. Imagine for a second you're sitting down with your 25-year-old self. What one piece of advice would you give him on a personal note? And what one piece of advice would you give him from a business perspective? So my piece of advice this is something, and it's funny because like thinking about 25 was only, you know, felt like it was yesterday. I only just turned 31, but, you know, I thought about this a lot on my 30th birthday. I thought about this a lot on my 31st birthday. And it was the concept that, you know, true growth is not a month to month thing. You know, and I think for the longest time, a lot of us really hyper focus on the week to week, the month to month, the what am I doing? How have I grown? What's happening? And, you know, it often can feel just you can get lost very easily. And I think the the reflection that I've started to do now is really very much year to year of realizing that, you know, month to month feels like a jungle as, and, you know, life feels like a jungle. But I think when you look so close, you know, and you can't see the forest through the trees, you know, it you, you got to allow yourself more time to zoom out. And I think that everyone would objectively see so much growth in themselves, both personally and professionally, if they zoom out and say, what did I do this year? Where was I at? You know, what did I do last year? And where was I at? And I think, there's so much fulfillment and gratitude that comes from that kind of a reflection, you know, both as a, as a human being and as a professional, no matter what you're doing. And I think, you know, so that would be, that would be the biggest piece of advice is really don't judge your growth by month to month. Look, look year over year and ask yourself if you're, you know, what, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to focus on, whatever growth you're striving to kind of achieve. I think that's the, that's the best kind of barometer for it, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that's such good advice, especially for me. I know that I mm. am always thinking about like the next step. <laughs> and then when you get to the next step, yeah. thinking about the next step. <laughs> so you never really take a look back. It's hard not to, you know, I think I, I'm the same. And it's funny because even though that's the advice that I just gave, I am, I struggle sometimes to take my own advice too, because I think we get so excited about the things that are happening and we want to see, you know, what's going to come next. And, you know, that's kind of why I also like, and have appreciated looking at where I was a year ago and seeing, you know, all the things that we wanted next week, you know, compounded 52 times and going, okay, cool. That was what that journey looked like. And I did grow, maybe not the same speed that I was thinking I would, but I did, you know, so it's, it's, it definitely helps (laughs) to zoom out a little bit. The culture theory, tell us a little bit about that. Is that something that you always knew that you wanted to create? Were you scared to create it? Um, I, it was definitely not something I always knew I wanted to create. And, you know, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. And I think with Arizona, um, I mean, to even zoom back a little bit out was, I always knew that, you know, there was a place in music for what I wanted to do, or just for me in general, I was always, it's, it's no, nothing inspires me more than music. And you know, I never knew exactly what I was meant to do in, in, in this industry. And in fact, I graduated college to go into the world of advertising because I couldn't get a job in music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once I had, I had stumbled upon that first video that Arizona had posted on Reddit, you know, in 2015, and, you know, five months later, I was all of a sudden a, a, a real manager managing a real major label act. And, you know, all of a sudden we're building a business and, and I'm I now... And people were asking me, like, what am I, you know, my company, what's going on? You know, I first, I didn't take anything else on outside of Arizona for probably the first four or five years. And, you know, as I kind of got used to, you know, a better understanding of my role and, you know, what it meant to be a manager and understanding, you know, how my bandwidth applies to, you know, to Arizona and how I can, you know, what time I need to give them to make sure that it's effective and what time I have left. Um, 
you know, in my day, I realized that I could take on more. And so the culture theory was just kind of honestly a perfect, <laughs> kind of a perfect example of this, this not month to month growth, but looking in the long term of how things tend to work themselves out. And, you know, it became this business that at first it was dabbling with, you know, Arizona and and a few other artists that we had that we had kind of explored working with. And then I had realized that, you know, that is a, a such a full time commitment to really develop an artist. And I wanted to explore other pathways. And, you know, Arizona has, has always been my the reason I got into this business. So I'll be with them all the way all the way through. And, you know, beyond that, I started managing songwriters and producers. And before I knew it, I now have artists and songwriters and producers. And so the culture theory just kind of came as as the universe would have it in its own time. But, you know, when I look back on it, it all happened exactly when it was supposed to, which is the crazy part. <laughs> I love that. All right, moving along. Every industry yeah. has little secrets. And you and I both know that it's no different in the music industry. And sometimes people think that's mm -hmm. a bad thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be good. What's one secret you would like to share with our listeners about the industry? This is a big one. It's a juicy one. No one is out of reach. Truly, nobody. If you can find out what company that they're at, you can guess their email or there are plenty of platforms. I'm a big I'm a big proponent and big advocate for a company called Roster, R-O-S-T-R. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can find someone's contact and you can reach out. That's the big secret. It's not hard to find that contact. The What I would say the key to that secret, though, is that, you know, when it comes to you know, sending you an email to them, it, to whoever it is that you're going to send it to is, it's always really important that you have to keep it simple. People are busy. They don't necessarily know you. So you have to give context. And, you know, what I would, the way I would say that is like an open door isn't immediately an open office. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have someone's door cracked and that's an opportunity to kind of give them, Hey, this is just a little bit about me, what I'm looking to do and what I'd like to talk about with you and keep it simple. And from there, if conversation starts, that's when you can open it up more. Um, so that's, those are, those are the, that's the big secret and the big key that goes with it. Um, and that's honestly been a tool that that's been able to open a lot of doors for me that I'm very fortunate for. Yeah. And definitely like, don't be discouraged if you get a no right away or nobody answers you. Cause that could turn to a yes. Ever, <laughs> ever. And people are different. You can't, you know, you don't know what's going on in their lives at the time. It could be, you know, it doesn't matter who you're reaching out to. They could be in the middle of a tour. They could have a million and one things flying and, you know, just because they haven't even responded to you in a month doesn't mean that they're not going to, you know, I think it's it, never get discouraged, never get discouraged. It's yeah, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Last question. Throughout your career, I can only imagine you've been asked plenty of questions, whether for an industry conference, the media, or maybe a promotion. But throughout all of those interviews and all of those questions, I'll bet there was one that you've never been asked, but would have liked to. So what is that question and what would be your answer? Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, and it's a hard one because I had to think about it. Um, for me, and a lot of this comes from a place of like, there, I, there's, I have so much love and gratitude for so many people that, you know, don't often get it enough because in a lot of these these interviews it's always asking about me or asking about the things that i'm doing and so my the question that i i guess i i posed to myself was who in your life has shaped the way you think both as a human being and also as a professional um and for me in my life and when it comes to the head on my shoulders and my disposition on everything you know my mom and my dad are both get equal credit you know my brother's get credit, Ian and Russell, you know, when it comes to my protective and my motherly instincts, you know, and learning what it meant to be, I'm an oldest brother. Um, Arizona gets credit 100% for me understanding what it actually meant to be a manager, um, you know, and help build a business alongside an artist. Uh, Mike Karen um, gets credit for really helping me truly understand what it means to be an A&R and what A&R means. Um, I learned so much from just really being a fly on the wall with that man through the whole Arizona process for the first two albums. And I'm so incredibly grateful for the wisdom that I've absorbed just by being around him. And uh, Neil Jacobson gets, uh, <laughs> gets credit for sure. When it came, when it came to understanding how to harness passion and translate it into sustainable business, um, you know, and Neil's been a big brother and a mentor of mine. And, you know, we've worked together. We, we, I helped him build Hollywood media for some time. And um, you know, those, those people, 
are the most fundamental, I would say, to really where I'm at now and what I'm really grateful for the lessons that I've learned, you know, and I think it's a nonstop process of learning and, and absorbing from people and, and growing with people. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm big on, it's not about me. It's always about, uh, there's so many people that inspire me that help me to be the person that I'm mm -hmm. honored and stoked to be on an interview talking about, you know, myself somehow, but I, but it's not about me. You know, it's, it's all the lessons that I've been really lucky to learn from so many incredible people that deserve that spotlight. Um, but yeah, so that's my, that's my question and answer. <laughs> Love it. Hey, well, shout out to my Karen at ABG and even Chris Maradi at uh, Hollywood because the time that this goes, yeah. through, their episodes are going live. They did the podcast. Nice. Yeah, shout out Chris. <laughs> Go check those oh, out. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, Jake, it has been so great having you on tonight. Appreciate you taking the time. And to Thank all my listeners, <laughs> and to all my listeners, I know you enjoyed hearing from Jake just as much as I enjoyed chatting with him. So stay tuned for next week's episode of 3Q, where I interview industry professionals for just 15 minutes by asking three powerful questions. See you next time. Uh -oh.